Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video. I'm Rex Finance, and this has really been a pretty phenomenal year. I mean, if you're not having a good year in the stock market, you've been short, and you know, I, I really don't feel sorry, but we got some problems coming up, especially this Thursday when we get our new CPI data, but we also have the fact that, you know, it's the month of August, and during the month of August, a lot of people go on vacation. They go to Miami. They go to, I don't know where, pick your spot. But what this leads to is a market that's vulnerable to shocks, and the CPI data coming on Thursday could definitely deliver a shock. Also, just keep in mind, I don't really believe in this, but it's something to pay attention to. Typically, the month of September. September is the worst month of the year. I almost said year of the month, which doesn't make sense. But month of the year, it's the worst one on average. Dating back to 1928, the average return in the month of September is negative 1.1%. Uh, that could be a little bit concerning. And in this video here that I posted six days ago called Stocks Are All About to Dip, here's why you can see my pretty little face there in the thumbnail. I discussed why I thought the markets were primed for a pullback, and a pullback is exactly what we've gotten. If we look at the NASDAQ, through the first few days of August, the NASDAQ's down more than 3%. And I mentioned in that video that the markets really were pricing in near perfection. So any news headline that came in as less good or even bad would probably tank the markets or initiate a correction in the stock market. And well, sure enough, just a few days later, the United States credit rating was downgraded, which led to a decline in stock prices. And then we had some earnings reports come out, which weren't terrible, but they weren't great. They were less good. So the stock market fell even a little bit further. And we've also had some international things happening in Japan and China that are all contributing to an overall market correction currently. And unfortunately, this might not be coming to an end. The less good news that we could receive on Thursday is coming from CPI. We can look at the Cleveland Fed's forecast for inflation. Uh, and during July, they're expecting headline CPI to come in at 3.42% and core CPI to come in at 4.92%. That is in comparison to a 3% headline inflation rate in June and a 4.8% core inflation rate in June. So uh, if the Cleveland Fed's forecasting model is correct for the month of July, we're going to see somewhat of a resurgence of inflation. And based on their current forecast, they're even saying that August numbers, when they're reported in September, could be even worse. And really quickly, we are the fastest growing stock market YouTube channel currently, and it'd be pretty cool to continue that trend. So if you are new here or returning and not yet subscribed, just check below. Make sure you subscribed. I appreciate it. And yeah, it's probably pretty safe to say that uh, the markets would not reward a resurgence of inflation, even if it's only temporary especially like the way they rewarded last month's inflation reading that came in below expectations. So this very well could signal more trouble for our stock and bond markets. In the snap of a finger, you'd have CNBC contributors, YouTubers, and all these different financial commentators all of a sudden come out and start saying that, yeah, inflation isn't moderating anymore and uh, it looks like it could be getting sticky again or we're going to see a resurgence, which would just add to the fuel of the downside in the stock market. This is also bad because this is probably going to put the Fed in a little bit of a predicament for the month of September when they have their next rate hike. The risks of doing too much are rising rapidly but you also would have resurging inflation or sticky inflation based on the data. So what does the Fed do? Right now, there's only a 14% probability of a rate hike being priced into the markets. And if we do get this not so good inflation data, we could begin to price in a rate hike all of a sudden for the month of September. And yeah, if you ask me, I do believe we're going to enter this temporary period of sticky inflation where it's not falling as quickly as we want it to. And I think that could spell some trouble. But all hope is not lost. You've probably followed this before in the past. There's another model out there that tracks real-time inflation. It updates every single day, and that's called Trueflation. You just type in trueflation.com, and it's pretty handy. You get this nice little chart here. It tracks millions of prices every single day. And if we scroll through the data throughout the month of July, the Trueflation rate really kind of 
hovered between 2.1% and 2.6%. So which model is going to be right? Because we got two models telling us two different things. If the trueflation model ends up being correct and the Cleveland Fed is wrong, well then, yeah, we're going to see a stock market rally. Let's go. But believe it or not, it might be a little bit of a bummer to you. I, I don't have my own personal model that tracks millions of prices every day. So what I do is I dumb this down. There are three prices that I'm going to dive into today that should signal and tell us where this inflation data is going to come in at. Sounds simple enough. First of all, the main reason the Cleveland Fed is predicting an uptick in inflation is because gasoline and oil prices went up went up to the moon last month in July. You can see that on the chart here, and even in the first week of August, gasoline prices have gone up even more, which could be why the Cleveland Fed is predicting an even bigger uptick for the month of August when we do get that data. But there is a lot of the month of August left, so I'm not just going to spread FUD. For all we know, gasoline prices could crater and hit new lows. However, this is going to play a big factor into the new CPI data we're going to get on Thursday. But for the bulls, and I am am one, not literally, but I'm, I'm a bull in the stock market. We have a couple prices here that are signaling maybe we could be in for a positive CPI surprise for the month of July and potentially even the month of August. For example, the first one we can look at is used car prices. Via the Mannheim index, we know that in the month of July, used car prices fell and they fell quite significantly. So it's expected that in the CPI data report, used car prices are also going to fall. You can see on this chart, the two of them lined up. CPI is in red, the Mannheim index is in blue. And there's a lot of scholars out there that think used car prices could fall another 20 to 30%. So that's just gonna be a disinflationary pressure on CPI data for many weeks and for many months to come if that does end up playing out. Then the even bigger deal, in my opinion, is shelter inflation. Shelter inflation makes up a huge weighting of the overall CPI basket, and we really have yet to see shelter in the CPI start to disinflate and fall. Although we know, based on current data, that rent has fallen, that home prices have fallen, but there's always a delay with that in seeing those actually hit the CPI data. However, based on the red line, which once again is the CPI data, we can see that we finally inflected to the downside. And based on the Zillow index, which is in blue, and the apartment list index, which is in green, we should have several months here of heavy, heavy negative disinflationary pressure on CPI data because shelter inflation is beginning to fall and the disinflation is starting to show in the CPI data. In fact, this apartment list index is actually currently showing deflation when it comes to shelter. And this peaked at an inflation rate of over 18% year over year in 2021. Now it's down to negative 0.7% year over year in 2023. So if we're looking for a positive CPI surprise, it's more than likely going to come from shelter disinflation or deflation. And speaking of deflation, we already know that the goods sector is deflating. We got that data in last month's CPI report. Most people haven't even talked about this, and I don't know why, but for consumer goods in CPI, the inflation rate was negative 1.2% year over year in June. And for PCED, it was negative 0.8% in June. And I think we have a few months yet where we're going to see continued deflationary pressure in the goods economy, which is going to help out when CPI data is released. However, you can also look at this and see that, well, maybe uh, this disinflationary pressure is going to come to an end soon because we can't just deflate forever and ever. Eventually, this deflationary pressure and disinflationary pressure from the good side is going to end. But the good news is, is I believe that services inflation is also going to prove to be transitory. I think services are also going to disinflate very rapidly, very shortly. The reason I say that is because if we go back and look at what caused all of this inflation. It was really just excessive fiscal and monetary policy that unleashed a huge buying binge, uh, which overwhelmed an already stressed out supply chain. And then lastly, this is kind of mind blowing and bears definitely want to ignore this one. Just look away if you're a bear right now. But according to the latest estimate, the Atlanta Fed is predicting GDP to grow by 4.1% year over year for Q3. That's ridiculous growth for the overall GDP. The economy is literally flying and it doesn't look like it's going to slow down anytime soon, which 
gives credence to my thought process, and I've believed this for a very long time. You can go back to October of 2022. I made a video. Stocks just bottomed and nobody noticed. Click the eye in the top right-hand corner. I predicted the bottom of the stock market based on my beliefs here. Now, I don't have a crystal ball, I promise. I'm going to be wrong in the, in, in the future. I've been wrong in the past, and I might be wrong about this video and what I say in this video. But ever since then, I've believed that this inflation is going to end up being transitory. Now, we could see a brief hiccup for the next two or three months where inflation is sticky. Maybe we see a slight resurgence, but I believe based on the economic indicators and the fundamentals of the economy that we're going to continue to see moderating inflation over the long term while we continue to sidestep this recession that was supposed to hit in like January of 2022. I, I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting for it, Bears. But with that, I'm going to end this video here. Just be cautious out there and know that potentially we could have some disappointing CPI data and that would lead to different commentators starting to talk negatively, which could lead to a further market correction. But we like market corrections on this YouTube channel because we like to buy stocks when they go down. But if you are new here or returning and not yet subscribed, I know there's somebody out there watching this video that uh, is not subscribed. Hit the subscribe button down below for me. Leave a like. Comment down below what you think inflation data is going to come out as. And with that, have a great rest of your day. Stay blessed. Keep 10 toes to the ground and your chin up. Peace out.